Welcome back to E-Bike Garage and welcome to the build of this giant Revive you can see behind me. Let's get straight into things shall we? I haven't had much time to video some of the details of what I've been doing with building this giant Revive. So for now uh, I'll just take you through what I've already done which is mainly the wiring and the rear motor. I'll start things off by talking about the controller. So in this bike we've got a brain power controller which is a fairly generic cheap controller does the job has censored and sensorless modes so it doesn't matter if a hall sensor in the motor dies it also has pedal assist which I've hooked up as well um, it's fairly low power uh, hence the size uh, but it's also sine wave so it should be a little bit more efficient so I've mounted it up in here because it's as tucked out of the way as possible clearance wise um, it's a very snug fit and it shouldn't hit the tire uh, under full compression. As for the wiring itself, I've managed to tuck it in fairly nicely all along under here. Um, it's a bit of a tight squeeze to get it all down in there, um, but worth it in the end because uh, it's totally tucked it out of the way. That goes right underneath. I've also included disconnects for the rear motor close to the motor because the last thing you want to have to do when you change a tire is remove all of that wiring and have to reinstall it. The other few little things I've done um, is the, also the wiring for the display and the throttle uh, that comes up underneath here and actually is inside the frame here and comes out through here all the way up to the handlebars. Bit of a challenge to get all that to come through. Had to cut the wires and then resolder them to connect them up. The way I've done this is this is originally meant to be a torque arm that, like many that connects to a hose clamp however instead I've drilled a new hole that lines up with an existing rack mount here and uh, that fits quite nicely and really does stop the motor from turning in the wrong direction at all. This whole top plate here can be removed to fit the battery inside which is what I'll be building next. So I've got the 4P10S cells here ready to go the BMS this will fit inside the frame the BMS will not so I'm going to have to mount the BMS on the outside and run wires into the battery from there so it should be a fairly straightforward build it's only very small um, but they do have to go end on end so uh, I'm going to have to obviously bend the nickel over to make them fit will be a bit of a challenge uh, and keep it compact so it'll slide in nicely with some padding. That's the next step. As you can see from some of the time lapse you would have just seen, this is the end result. After spot welding the nickel between each of these groups and end to end spot welding them into place, it was obviously a little bit tricky to get each of these done. Uh, the main problem being that as it got taller and taller, 
I needed something to press against as I spot welded and uh, I used a variety of different ways to achieve that. Particularly tricky were the main discharge spot welds at either end because I had to push against the length of the battery uh, but there was nothing really to push down on anymore to apply significant pressure. And in the case of the positive end uh, it did result in a few uh, large sparks as a result of not applying enough pressure. Uh, soldered in place between each series group and they fit quite nicely along the top there. I've test fit the battery uh, already to make sure it does fit in the bike and it, and it should fit comfortably with some padding added on top of this and that's the next step. I'm actually charging it up for the first time now. Uh, so far so good. I've tested the BMS by disconnecting the balance leads and it does shut off. Uh, so next step here is to uh, apply padding to the battery uh, and then some heat shrink over the top of that and we should be able to do our first full test fit. Now what you've just seen me do there is put Kapton tape all around the battery. Now normally that isn't recommended because it insulates the battery and traps the heat in there making it a bit of a ticking time bomb around heat. This is a very low discharge battery and in this case because of the structure of this battery I actually need that tape to help apply an even tension along either side of the battery to keep it straight. That's why I've been using this piece of wood here to make sure that as I put tension on the tape and apply it across the battery I'm making sure that it's straight then locking it into that shape into that straight line as I apply the tape. That helps to keep it straight and now what was a floppy battery before is now very rigid and stiff in every direction because of the tape. So from here I can now apply padding and then some uh, heat shrink over the top uh, and it will be very uh, rigid after I do that which will help to help me get it in and maybe out of the bike at a later stage. Alright, so added all the padding and I just had to remove the padding again from the top of the battery. Uh, it turns out that it's a very tight fit, in fact it was too tight to fit with that top layer of padding. Now this is the top side of the battery so uh, the amount of force on this is far less. It doesn't really need as much padding if any. I've added an extra layer of capped on tape to help insulate it and the heat shrink that goes on top of this should do the job the rest of the way. So the majority of the build's now done. About the only thing left to do is a proper disconnect for the charger so it doesn't need to be plugged and unplugged every time. As you would have seen in the last little bit of footage, uh, what I ended up doing for the rack plate here uh, is I actually used a bit of uh, leftover flooring that I've got here to lift it up. So initially I put the BMS under here and tightened down the bolts on top but uh, it was crushing the BMS quite a lot and I was worried that it was actually going to uh, break it and the plate also wasn't level and the bolts weren't re even really tight so it just really wasn't working very well. In the end I put this uh, leftover pieces of flooring under here to space it out and make it all flat and even. The battery's in there nice and snug with, with a decent amount of padding added a bit of heat shrink to all the connectors here so that they're all nice and snug as well and waterproof. In some testing I did actually discover the corner of the controller does actually touch the top of the mud guard here uh, but I've tightened up the suspension a bit here uh, to make it a bit firmer which isn't ideal but it does mean that uh, it no longer hits. I also changed the brakes back from the cool stops I had on here to some regular brake pads because for whatever reason those cool stop brake pads just were not working and these actually break properly now. So I've done some further tuning on the controller and discovered it is quite capable of outputting a bit more power 
uh, which is more than enough given how light this bike is to actually get you up some pretty steep hills. The pass system also works quite well, although it is only speed based, not torque based, so there is that drawback. So with the build that far complete, there's only one thing left to do, which is take it out for a test ride. Thanks for watching the build of this giant Revive with its internal battery. The bike rides really well, handles really well, and uh, yeah, it can handle even some rough stuff as you saw there. Uh, the suspension in the rear does soak up a lot of uh, bumps. One of the things I noticed about this bike is that uh, the seating position and handlebar position it needs to be quite finely tuned. So yeah, if I was hanging on to it, that'd be something I'd be doing, and that'll be uh, a bit of a problem for the new owner. Um, Apart from that, the bike rides really well, uh, handles really well, can turn in such a tight turning circle uh, compared to my other bike here over here. So I'll be a bit sad to see this bike go, but it does definitely need to go. Uh, it's going to a family member that definitely needs it, so I'll be good, glad to see it go over there. And in other news, I've got a website now, uh, ebikegarage.com.au. Uh, go over there and check it out. There's a link in the description below. It's uh, mainly for selling things that I've built or can build for people and custom built parts uh, but I'll chuck a blog up there as well so that I can start putting these videos in sequence up there also. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers!